Welcome back to Square Off. We've seen several blunders and a few staff shakeups since Governor Katie Hobbs took office six months ago. But the new hire who might matter most to her administration's success is Hobbs' new chief of staff, Chad Campbell. There's evidence Campbell's up to the job. He played a crucial role in the state's historic Medicaid expansion 10 years ago this month. Take a look at this clip of then Democratic House leader Chad Campbell at the bill signing with Republican Governor Jan Brewer. I want to thank everybody for being here, and I want to point out uh, who at the beginning of the session would have thought that not only would I be getting one pin from the governor, but two pins from Governor Brewer now this session. Uh, and I, 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 yes, I have. Thank you. You're right. I have. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Touche. Touche. A Republican governor and a Democratic leader hugging. They, there were three hugs that day. Campbell showing some of the cross-the-aisle skills he'll need to get things done for Katie Hobbs in this era of divided government. Joining us to talk about Katie Hobbs' new hire and what else has been going on during the legislature's planned four-week break, two of the most seasoned Capitol journalists, Mary Jo Pitzel of the Arizona Republic and Jim Small of the Arizona Mirror. Welcome back to Square Off. Full disclosure, Chad Campbell has been a guest on this show many times. I've known him for many years, as you both have as well. Uh, he was in the legislature and has a long, long history of the Capitol. Jim, let's start with the basics. Why does a governor's chief of staff matter? Well, I, ultimately, they're the ones that they, they really have to kind of two jobs, right? They've got to they have to manage the governor in a lot of ways and they also have to you know really they're the person that is the point person that gets reported to kind of from state government from the bottom of state government up and, and all the stuff that filters up and and they run the office and the administration and you know ideally the policy and the politics as well which you know I, I think is something that a skill set that Chad Campbell brings to the job he's both seasoned with politics as a former elected official himself and a former state legislator understands how the capital works and also since then he's been working uh you know outside the capital in in the world of politics particularly in elections and issue advocacy and things like that and i think that those are are skills where we've seen you know so far i think the hobbs administration has really been lacking and it has has really maybe fumbled the ball a number of times so kind of a super traffic cop it, it, right. That's what I was going to say. It was a traffic cop. Yeah. yeah. They direct things. Also, I mean, Chad spent, you know, almost all his time in public life in Arizona politics. I mean, he knows who's who's where, what, you know, where where to pull levers. Um, he brings all that experience to this, which will be really important because, as you know, there have been some stumbles and especially an ability to talk to lawmakers. He was one of them. Some of them that he served with are still there, although the leadership's quite different um, than it was 10 years ago when, when uh, Chad was in leadership. And I use that Medicaid expansion and his partnership with Governor Brewer there to show he does have those skills. For folks who weren't around, how significant was that Medicaid expansion? Oh, I mean, well, that was huge, first of all, for hundreds of thousands of Arizonans who got um, better access to health care. Uh, but also because it, it was a bipartisan um, you know, development and it went against the wishes of the leaders of the House and the Republican leaders of the House and Senate. Um, Brewer, with the help of you know a crucial number of Republicans and with the support of like all the Democrats, was able to pull together this coalition to bring in Medicaid expansion. And so, do you think you can pull off that kind of cross the aisle? Partnership, especially with progressives tugging at him on the Democratic mm -hmm. side, I, I think that it, that that's going to be the challenge, right? And, mm -hmm. and I think that the politics are just different now than they were even 10 years ago. And certainly, I know a lot of people have compared, you know, looked at the Hobbs administration and said, "Well, what about what did Janet Napolitano do when she was governor?" And the politics are, are you know, wildly different from what they were back then, and they're even different from when Chad Campbell was in leadership. But I think that he, you know, that's the task in front of him, and and. He, he is someone who I, I think has proven, has, has a track record of being able to, to at least try to have those conversations and, and work toward brokering those deals, whether they're able to actually accomplish those things, uh, you know, and, and find some kind of mm. peace with the Republican-led legislature outside of what they got done on the budget, I think remains to be seen. Uh, and it's funny, over the last week, several people have brought up the name of Governor Brewer's first chief of staff, yeah, who right she right. brought with her from the Secretary of State's office, just as... Yeah. Governor Katie Hobbs brought her top person at the Secretary of State's office along. Yeah. No knock, but they just don't have the skills, do right. they? In fact, um, 
to go back even farther, I mean, Governor Fife Symington's first chief of staff lasted, I don't know, about a half year. She had run his campaign, but, you know, just you, you bring in the people that you know and you trust when you're new to government, which which makes sense because you have to have those kind of people around you. But we there is some there's a history of um, initial chiefs of staff not necessarily being steeped in all the, the the intrigue and the politics of how to deal with with the legislature. It really is three level chess. I, I do want to note if we haven't said so, but Chase Cam, uh, sorry, Chad Campbell's very close to Katie Hobbs. They were mm. seatmates in the legislature. He was in touch with her campaign. There, he's close to Kirsten Cinema as well, Senator Cinema. So there's a lot of a lot of ties that go way back. Speaking of ties. He's taken the reverse revolving door. Usually chief of staffs leave to become lobbyists. He's a lobbyist who's now becoming chief of staff. Could that create some awkward situations? Uh, I mean, it, it certainly, I think you, you can envision a situation where, where that could. Uh, you know, I know he, he and his firm only represent one uh, client right now. Uh, it's a, a veterans uh, advocacy group. So, uh, you know, to, to, that, to that extent, I mean, I think it's fairly minimal exposure, but, but he's certainly been involved, I think, in a lot of the politics, kind of, especially in the Phoenix area, uh, some stuff at the state level, but also a number of things at the municipal level. Uh, he and his firm were, were very heavily involved in pushing that Coyotes uh, stadium deal that voters rejected in Tempe. Okay. And I would suspect he might get a little involved in the governor's effort to try to flip the legislature. Um, you know, he is, he's run numerous legislative campaigns um, over the years, you know, aside from his own, so we'll see how that plays out. Okay, gotta pause there, give folks an update on my recent interview with Democratic Attorney General Chris Mays. Mays said her office would investigate potential fraud, waste, and abuse in Arizona's Universal Voucher Program. Republican Superintendent Tom Horn, who oversees the Empowerment Scholarship accounts, objected to Mays' suggestion of any alleged wrongdoing. Horn's spokesman provided this statement. When he took office, Superintendent Horn brought in a full-time internal ESA auditor, revised the allowable expenses list to conform to state law, and tightened controls of debit card purchases, among other measures, to protect the integrity of the program.